Live from the Computer History Museum in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE. Covering OpenStack Silicon Valley 2016. Brought to you by Mirantis. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Lisa Martin. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Silicon Valley for the OpenStack Silicon Valley Conference. This is where the OpenStack Foundation and the OpenStack community comes to Silicon Valley to essentially talk amongst themselves and also talk about the progress of OpenStack. I call it the Open Cloud Initiative. This has really been a multi-year effort with a robust community. And of course, Silicon Angles, the Cube has been there from the beginning. I'm John Furrier, extracting the signal from noise with Lisa Martin, my co-host, our next guest, is Sean Roberts, Director of Technical Program Management at Walmart Labs. And we're excited to have him on because even though he can't talk about the news of Jet.com being sold to Walmart, um, he can talk about some of the innovations that Walmart Labs does and give us some insight into how that relates to the innovations with OpenStack. So Sean, welcome to theCUBE, great Thank to you. see you. Thanks, um, Thank you. So up on stage today, we, every year, the thing that's been really most impressive to me is that OpenStack puts out use cases. People up on stage aren't selling vaporware, they're talking about real things, real changes. Um, and this is really important because cloud growth is so fast, we're seeing Amazon's numbers, Azure's tooling up, the stacks are different among the different bigger cloud vendors, yet the enterprises want to have, you know, you're blocking and tackling cloud for their enterprises. So right. give us the update, what were you talking about up on stage and what are some things you're working on? Sure, so um, the two themes in my talk were about um, agility and uh, meritocracy. So um, more specifically to what you're, you're focused on, the, um, the agility that um, OpenStack and OneOps, um, two open source projects that, uh, that Walmart uses uh, quite extensively, has really allowed and is continuing to allow Walmart to transform into a agile technology company. So that's, that's a really important part of um, our, our present and our future. And obviously with the technology Walmart Labs, it's no secret in, in the tech community, Walmart has been very data driven, very technology focused, really powering a lot of the e-commerce on the retail side, but obviously with all the changes in the marketplace, obviously the Jet.com acquisition, really points to the digital aspect of it, which means the consumption of commerce is going to be blurred between retail and, and online. Right. Just not, it's not your shopping cart anymore. It's a lot more. Right. So this agile really kind of connects the dots to this preferred user consumption. How do enterprises get set up for that? Because this is kind of where everyone's thinking about, they call it digital transformation, but basically they need to have some infrastructure, it has to be aligned with subscription-based stuff. What's your, what's your take on the, the OpenStack, under the hood, capabilities? Is it solid, is it ready? It is, um, but there's, there's an important distinction to be made. Um, OpenStack and um, other open source projects, by and large, are research and development projects. Um, back in, uh, traditional enterprise days where we really relied on vendors exclusively to give us um, products. Um, the research and development was done within the companies and uh, we w you wouldn't really see the results of that for sometimes five to six years after they actually started with an idea and developed it in private. It's like a black box almost, really, right? Yeah, I mean, and they, uh, I, I think IBM coined the phrase uh, walled garden. Yeah. You know, where they would try to cultivate um, skunk works programs and they'd, they'd really cut, try to come up with innovative ideas, but they'd do it within a walled garden. It would be closed off. So what we've done with open source in the last 10 years, most significantly, we've really accelerated development of uh, research and development by coming up with an open garden, if you will. So we do research and development in the open and that's really what OpenStack is. It's a, res a giant research and development group of projects that we work on collaboratively with frenemy organizations. Sometimes we're competing on a lot of other things, but we come together to collaborate. And then from that, we can either create products based on that research and development or to sell or to, uh, to use internally. For so you guys uses. at Walmart Labs are doing things in the open with OpenStack. We are, yes. Can you share some of the projects you're doing and some of the recent news you guys have done around some of the projects? Sure. Um, so there's. There's three projects that probably be the most important to highlight. Um, there's uh, other traditional projects we've been involved in, but the, uh, the most notable three are the Creighton Project, which is an inventory management system um, that aims to become a, a, a similar to a, a CMDB um, for OpenStack. Um, that project just got started a couple months ago. 
Um, there's another project that was started a little bit earlier, but it's still um, uh, growing um, and developing. It's called Watcher, and it's a resource optimization um, project. Um, and then the, there's the OneOps project that uh, we put into uh, GitHub, into the open source community in December. Um, but uh, now we're exploring the option of actually moving that project uh, into the OpenSec Foundation as an OpenSec project. So definitely see um, some considerable maturation of what Walmart is doing. I think one of the things that is interesting to me is a lot of people know Walmart as a retailer. We're here talking to you today about Walmart as a technology company, and I think the, one of the neat things about that that's transcendent is a lot of companies today have to be technology companies to be competitive. We look at e-commerce 3.0, we as consumers, want any product, anytime, anywhere. How many of us bought things online over the weekend and it's at our doorstep yesterday? Talk right. to us about what Walmart is doing to tackle some of the challenges of e-commerce 3.0 and how that's being fueled or facilitated by OpenStack. Sure, um, well, you guys may have heard of Walmart Pay, uh, which is uh, very similar to the way that Starbucks um, allows uh, uh, consumers to uh, purchase items. And it, it works pretty well. I've been actually using it quite a bit myself. Um, and uh, the, the other, uh, probably the most notable other thing that's, that really is being uh, fueled by our adoption of uh, agile technologies like OneOps and uh, uh, OpenStack is uh, the, the grocery home shopping. Uh, so that's really changed the, the relationship between Walmart and its customers. And arguably, um, back in the 90s, there was the, the web van you know, that was an awesome yeah. idea, but it was way too early. Really? And I, I really think yeah. nowadays, this is the really the maturation of the idea, the right place, right time. Um, we really see that uh, uh, the commercial business and the, the ability for our customers to actually drive up and have their groceries waiting for them when they drive up and have them put in the back of their car yeah. and have them drive away. It's just I mean, you think about the web, amazing man, change. a great example. Let's, take, let's double down on that because at the time, there was some process operationalizing of what that means. The technology costs were extremely high. Yes. There was no mobile, right? Yep. So now you have, everyone's connected. You have sensors for IoT potentially there. Yep. All the supply chain work that's done on the brick and mortar side is done. So a lot of things are kind of lined up beautifully for that. Right. So as ent enterprises look at that and they say, okay, all those promises and bubble type you know, trends that happen from dot com days, even in web 2.0 and even, even the social now, um, we do see Uber and stuff out there. It's okay, they say, okay, I think it's now safe to put my toe in the water. <laughs> Why is agile important for them? And you share your perspective on that because a lot of folks, they see that they should jump in and build. Right. They just don't know how, right? So there's right. a lot of kind of, I want, kind of maybe over the top of saying too many, they need the use case, they need the playbook, but they don't know how. The number one question we get is, I got to go there, it's a mandate. How do I become agile? How do I do it? It, and unfortunately, isn't just one thing. <laughs> yeah. But um, if I was to call out um, a, a group of things that, could, um, that you can put together, it's continuous integration, continuous delivery. So th those terms CI, CD are thrown, out, uh, thrown around quite a bit. But those things really mean is it, it allows, well, maybe just use OpenStack as an example. It's what, um, the strength of OpenStack's infrastructure and its ability to manage the, um, the software pipeline, this, the continuous integration has really been the strength of how OpenStack has evolved and, um, and really been successful. Without that ability to be agile, to be able to deliver thousands of patches a day, OpenStack wouldn't be as a group of projects where it is today. So for companies to adopt that similar tech group of technologies, which unlike OpenStack, there is no one way of building a CI-CD, mm -hmm. that software pipeline, that delivery of software packages into production. Um, but we're, we're getting a lot closer. So um, uh, for any company um, like Walmart, um, we need to invest in the people to develop and curate that infrastructure to support that CI-CD so that we can be successful, so we can hire and retain the developers that will not only come to work for us, but they'll want to stay. Along that front, I'm glad that you brought that up. That was actually going to be my next question, was, is about the cultural change, the people, the processes that are needed to facilitate such a transformation. Looking at Walmart Labs as a great use case, 
as John was saying, to learn from for other enterprises who are struggling or maybe thinking, I need to move to cloud, when, where, with whom. Talk to us about some of the cultural change that needed to be implemented or is probably in implementation in addition to the technology to help Walmart Labs be successful here and really become a retailer that is clearly competitive with uh, Amazon. Sure. Um, so uh, it started with an a couple acquisitions. I, I believe it was 2011, 2012. Um, and the, the idea of Walmart Labs was um, uh, born out in the valley, uh, locally here. Um, so uh, uh, from that, it allowed um, Walmart as a company to uh, reinvent, re-innovate um, some ideas that would already been around and to uh, move forward faster. Um, that concept has um, grown and is, um, I'd say that a lot of tr um, what would be considered to be traditional Walmart has uh, joined in on uh, what Walmart Labs mm -hmm. represents, which is really the dot-com side of Walmart. So that, that's, that's born out over the last few years, and it's, it's gone through an amazing, yeah. uh, one of the slides I didn't show, but it shows the, the rapid increase of the number of uh, application deployments which is really, the, I, I think, the strength of an agile company. If you can push changes into production rapidly, we're doing 40,000 a month now. It's an amazing number. Um, so it allows us to make a small change, test it in flight, the code itself, and then to actually push it in production. So we can do that many times a day. Kind of looking at the customer experience perspective for a second. One of the things that uh, Jonathan Bryce talked about in his keynote this morning was the impact that OpenStack is having on the net promoter score of its users. Walmart being a very well-known, big global retailer with affiliates um, in a lot of global locations. Can you share with us the impact to the net promoter score or the impact that you're seeing to the customer experience as a result of uh, the Walmart Labs and what it's facilitating for e-commerce? Yes, um, so it, it allows us, um, not only to fix um, problems, you know, if there's a failure, it allows us to recover quickly from that failure um, and push the chain, test it, verify that it's not going to make things worse, it's actually going to fix the failure and put it, push it into production very quickly. But it also allows us to be very agile with features that uh, dip, the many different parts of Walmart and Walmart uh, labs are developing on a day in, day out basis. Mm -hmm. So it allows us to really be very agile with our features that we uh, make available to our customers, which provides a much better experience to them. One of the things I've been admiring about Walmart Labs, I've been following since, I think it was Cosmix, was the acquisition that came in in the Valley you mentioned, um, has been that Walmart Labs has been always big data. I mean, they've always been using technology um, and integrating it in as fast as possible. Right. Now with the cloud, okay, a new power source is there. You have the supply chain locked and loaded, solid there, huge scale on the Walmart side. What are some of the new things that you guys see with cloud? Can you share some examples uh, where you, you go back to the ranch, or so to speak, and then the, here in the valley and say, okay, here's the stuff we're doing with, with OpenStack. Here's how we at Walmart can create a new power source to blend that new bridge to stay on the cutting edge for Walmart. What are some of the things that you talk about when you go back to the ranch um, that you could share with the folks here that they could take away as a learning point? Sure. So um, probably the, the thing that I haven't spoken about um, uh, very much is our ability to um, burst a cloud. So um, by, all, by all means it's not complete, it's not finished, but in the one ops um, project that we have in open source in our implementation, we, are, um, we do have the capability of uh, utilizing public cloud for extra capacity. So um, really critical for um, not only a large retailer, but for any enterprise that has um, peak capacity uh, times of their business, um, their ability to not have to run that infrastructure all year round and be able to uh, only uh, rent it when they need to, rent to peak, so to speak. Um, so classic e-commerce spikes, they talk about Black Friday, all these things, right? Seasonal yes, changes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when I was at Yahoo, we did much of the same thing, but it was usually around some social event that would happen. Um, somebody passes away, or um, the Olympics, or something like that, so. Scale uh, up would, instantly, no big provisioning. Yes, that's, that's the, the ideal scenario. Yeah. It's a, not quite that automated at this point, <laughs> but we're working towards it. And that's part of the reason that we want to push OneOps into OpenStack, or we want to explore pushing OneOps so into OpenStack. So the management OpenStack. piece is visibility into the operations, 
the nirvana is okay flash mobbing the, the, the compute or resource making it flash mobbing, completely word, automatic yeah. where it dials up and dials down capacity yeah. um, not and treating our availability zones our data centers just like any other resource like the public yeah. availability zones of our um, our uh, partners and it's hard to back into that i can imagine it must be very difficult to try to predict and understand that without understanding the management piece. So it sounds like your one ops has been a key to that. Is that, am I reading that right? It is, it is. It's, 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 a, it's a very important, well, as I said before, um, the ability to continue to deliver changes into production is, is a really important way for the company to be nimble with um, failures, but also delivering new features. So it's, it's really allowed the company to move a lot faster and to uh, think on its feet. Well, thanks for coming on theCUBE. I really appreciate you taking the time uh, from, from the keynote. I got to ask you the final question, then Lisa might have one herself. OpenStack has always been kind of viewed as the OS of the cloud, and that was kind of the early day kind of view of it. But right. as the swim lanes are being developed, and as it's hardening out with some clear market opportunities for, within the, the foundation, the challenge has always been how to get the builds from the trunk uh, up, up and running. Okay. Um, can you give us an update? What's happening this year for the folks watching? Is What's the state of OpenStack today in your mind? How would you share the impact of this event here in Silicon Valley? So I, I would say the state of OpenStack is pretty healthy. Um, it, I had a couple of slides up earlier that showed um, the month over month contributions and the number of projects. Um, it's pretty consistent, it's a little bit of a, a heartbeat, but it's consistently trending up. Um, and that's uh, really those consistent contributions is, is such an important indicator of the health of OpenStack, the health of the community, and it's, it doesn't seem to be slowing down. And again, calling out to the very important infrastructure team that supports the CI, uh, that is the lifeblood of OpenStack. Those guys and girls make yeah. it happen every single day, and it's what makes OpenStack strong. From your perspective as a technologist, the future of retail, obviously we see what Amazon's doing. You guys have Walmart, you have Jet.com, now one coming together with that. As a technologist enabling the future, are we going to be living in a totally digitally transformed world soon? What year can you peg it? Predict, <laughs> predict the future. What's, what's the future well, of retail? As soon as I have a flying car, <laughs> I, I think we're there. <laughs> I'm waiting for it. Um, it's, I think we're just going to see more features, more, uh, expectation on that, uh, you know, we all have very high expectations. Now we expect our yeah. phone to do pretty much everything. Yeah. I always expected it to do, but my poor Nokia back in the day, you know, could only <laughs> make phone calls. Yeah. So uh, our expectations are so high nowadays, yeah. and I, I think we're getting close to the point where we can really be able to uh, meet those expectations as, uh, as companies like Walmart strive to do. Last question for you is, um, one of the things that, that Jonathan Bryce talked about in the keynote was, this number one business driver is standardization. Clearly a tremendous amount of success that Walmart Labs has achieved um, leveraging OpenStack. If you could just sum it you know, into a couple of sentences, what would your advice be for enterprises looking at Walmart Labs as a model for how to leverage Open Cloud? That's a good question. So um, I'd say uh, it, it's really about focusing on your people. Um, hiring and retaining the best quality people is so critical. Um, without it, you, you just, uh, you can't survive, you, you can't um, grow as a company, at least not consistently. Mm -hmm. So um, that's uh, the most important thing that I always focus on as, as a, a leader, to make sure that my team and the teams around me were always focused on hiring and retaining the best quality so that uh, we can move forward and have the best ideas and, and be the, the company that I think we can all be. Couldn't agree more. All right, final bumper sticker. What are you most excited about right now uh, in your role here in the OpenStack Foundation uh, and the industry? What are you most excited about? Well, not to keep tooting my own horn, or our own horn, but uh, I'm really excited about the prospect of moving OneOps into OpenStack. I think it's uh, something that we've been missing for a long time. Yeah. Um, it'll allow us to complete our mission of being able to easily deploy and scale, yeah. um, which we've been successful at Walmart doing. So I'm really excited about the opportunity yeah. to explore that with the rest of the OpenStack community and uh, to fulfill fill our dream. All right. Sean Roberts here from Walmart Labs. This is theCUBE live in Silicon Valley. I'm John Furrier with Lisa Martin. 
be right back with more. For more, go to siliconangle.com, go to siliconangle.tv, and follow us on the Twitter handle, at theCUBE. We'll be right back with more, you're watching theCUBE.